Rugby is known as a hooligans game played by gentlemen, typically played at public schools all over the world. However, the virtual sporting world has been somewhat deprived over the past few years, lacking a rugby title since EA worked with HP Studios on Rugby 08. However, with the World Cup this year, HP Studios have returned, this time with 505 Games as the publisher. Unfortunately, the PR company sent us a French version of the game, meaning that reviewing it was very difficult. However, the messieurs at Gaming to Disconnect did their best and found some footage of the game in English. After practicing the hacker a few times, we found out whether this game was a world beater or simply awful. The World Cup in New Zealand is the only tournament available in the game, which is a big issue, as rugby fans, dying for a next-gen version of their beloved sport, would want to be able to play in tournaments such as the Six Nations also. This is not the only area where the game is limited. Most of the teams are fully licensed, but Australia and host New Zealand are not, which is highly frustrating. Most national stadiums are included, and all that would be used in New Zealand are also. The World Cup mode itself is very simple and straightforward, but like the rest of the game, it severely lacks in depth. After completing the World Cup, there isn't much value in the game, although online play is available. This again though is very limited. The graphics are also disappointing, as I didn't see much difference between this and Rugby 08 over three years ago on the PlayStation 2. Barring a slight upscale, that's all that's changed. It's impossible to tell who a player is from looks alone. Despite this, the presentation of the game is highly polished and makes good use of the license. The player animations are also very similar to the PS2 version, for example, tackles and passes. They look exaggerated and unrealistic, which makes the title seem more like an arcade game than a rugby simulation. Regarding gameplay, this is a very fun title to play, as you have very tight games where strategy makes all the difference. Tactics can be customised on the fly via the right stick, meaning that if you have good knowledge of rugby, these can be used effectively. However, I found that a lot of the time it came down to button mashing, especially when in rucks and malls, and simply getting lucky when advancing forward. Overall, the game is a good representation of the Rugby World Cup, which gets underway next month, and will give some joy to those who are fans of the sport. However, this should only be bought if it can be picked up for a good price, as the replay value on the game is practically zero. Coming out soon is Journal Lomu Rugby Challenge, which has fully licensed national teams and club teams, as well as their respective tournaments. Despite this being very accessible, Rugby World Cup 2011 is going to be blown out of the water. Rugby World Cup 2011 gets a gaming to a disconnected rating of 6 out of 10.